it's not just about like fixing ourselves right. and making all these things go away. We are absolutely freed and forgiven and Jesus wants us to grow. Mm -hmm. Like the life of holiness and perfection is real. But St. Paul reminds us that even in our weakness, we're made strong. And so it's not a sign of like, I look how bad I am. Mm -hmm. But if what if what if our sin or our, our healing journey as it takes time, what it could what if it could just remind us that wow, like I'm so little and I'm so poor, and Jesus meets me here, and I have so much hope that he wants to heal me. Poco a poco vamos a llegar. Somos peregrinos, and you know that's who we are. We make our way. Hey, hey. hey I'm Father Mark Mary, joined by Father Pierre Toussaint and Father Angelus. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, that's a people shot. know. People know I'm not Father Angelus. That's true. Well, if you're both on, this is Father Innocent on the episode. Yes, if you have not figured out a way to tell apart our voices, this is Father Innocent Maria of Lincoln, the 402. <laughs> hey, you played the game. <laughs> uh, so. <laughs> So unnatural. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I just can't help it. You're like repping the 402 or I'm from the 402. But the 402. <laughs> I kind of put that on. I I probably have it in me. Somewhere. Yeah, you probably do. <laughs> to, to be gangster. <laughs> we talked about how we don't necessarily try to be cool, but I think Father Innocent does try to not be cool. I think there's like an active like. Mm. That's not true at all. I am very authentic. I don't <laughs> like to play games. But... <laughs> <laughs> but I don't, I don't like intentionally, like you guys think I'm not fun and I'm not cool. I don't think that's like a, a what? I mean, I don't think that's entirely true. I, I think I'm just my, try to be myself. I don't, I don't, I'm not that cool. I'm not that fun. Just kind of vanilla, but I'm okay with that. <laughs> You're not vanilla. That's for sure. And I wouldn't say you just don't, you don't like a lot of like <laughs> play activities. Right? Play activity? What are you talking about? <laughs> like he's not trying to play. He's not trying to play Settlers of Catan and trade for some sheep. <laughs> for H Club. He's got enough sheep. <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, I mean, I'll play, I'll, I play games on Saturday night, but... I will pay you to take some of my sheep, please. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. I play games on Saturday night. I, I like walks, but I'm like not like hanging out. I don't... I'm like past this stage of like playing organized sports with the bros. You're pretty focused. Yeah, I'm pretty focused. I'll say that. Sometimes we There's think we have to let that. go You're in the pocket. Um, <clears throat> we're all different. I have so here's here's what I have for us friends. First of all, just a reminder, and again, hopefully this stands out as like uniquely important to us is that we're going to be starting the fire within in a couple of weeks, and that's by Father Dubé. <laughs> And it's pretty serious, and we're going to try and take it serious and kind of get into it. So we do recommend if you're able to to get the book. Um, I just think there's a lot there. And again, it's a pretty, I mean, it's, it's serious. It's not like a, it's not play, it's not like, it's not play time. It's Father Innocent approved. Um, <laughs> dropped it. But, uh, I do so like this just, book a lot. <clears throat> so here's what, I have three wins and two losses <laughs> that I'm going to share with you guys real quick. Okay. We'll see if we can get through it real quick. <clears throat> First win is I was back home. My sister's got a Peloton. Mm. Three in a row, three days in a row. Rock that Peloton. I, do you know what a Peloton is? Come on. You talking to me? Yeah. You know what yes, that is? Yes, I know what a Peloton is. You know what a Peloton is? <laughs> yeah, it's a bike. I love, <laughs> like? I love me some Peloton. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm Just yeah, so yeah. you know. <laughs> three days in a row. <laughs> three days in a row. The only times I had an opportunity, three 30-minute rides. I used to try an hour, but I think that's a lie. I can only really do 30 minutes, <laughs> but I love it. Number one. That's the win. That was a big win. Okay. Well, oh, I so there's three, I, okay, so <laughs> three, they, three days one. in a row, so there's like one thing. It wasn't should, like I go, should I do three wins and the losses, or should I rotate? Win, no, loss, probably win, probably three wins. Just okay, keep, it, keep second, going The here. second win, we had a family visit, and um, one of the families has like some 20, 20 year old boy. Twenty one guy's like twenty, just about to turn twenty one. Another one is we're just about to turn twenty two. He's twenty one, just about to turn twenty two. The other one's twenty three, twenty four. <clears throat> but just kind of bros, like good dudes, and uh, we boxed. Hmm. It was and, just, you, and you got knocked out. No, it was just oh. body. It was just body shots, so like no punching in the head. Uh, but you know, as hard as we could go and you don't look cool if you're just doing body shots, by the way. Um, <clears throat> but I love that and I don't really get an opportunity to hit people or get hit by people and I got pretty bruised after it, but that was awesome. 
Sweet. Yeah, yeah. some pretty big bruises. But sorry, that's the win. That was a huge win. Okay. Huge win. I just want to make sure. I'm Massive <laughs> win. The third one is one of the dudes on the Costa Rica trip was doing the thirty push-ups a day thing. <clears throat> I don't know if I mentioned that. And that was like his New Year's resolution. But since the trip, I've been faithful to that and I haven't missed. And uh, huge win. Big win. Um, but is it, I asked, is, is the loss coming? Yeah, hold on, hold okay. on. I asked our postulants. It was kind of awkward because it was like his. It was his birthday, and so I wanted one of the things like is like an evidence thing. He was like recording it when he would do it. So I wanted to do that for him and like send it to him as like a like a birthday gift. <clears throat> so I asked, I was like kind of nervous about it. I'm like asking the postulants to do it. I'm like, hey, this is kind of a weird request, but would you guys be willing to try this? And they all were like all about it. They were all, they were all totally down without any hesitation. And it was very funny because like a couple of them like got on like the like refectory table <laughs> and chairs and everyone did it kind of like weird stuff. But it was funny. Yeah, I like that. I appreciate that. So that was a win. That was a big CFR postulate win in my book. <laughs> mm. Number two, two losses on the, I got a nose, I, I got a, a bloody nose on the plane yesterday. Ooh, like, like, like make a scene bloody nose? Like Not really, but it could have been. But it was right before we landed. I didn't really have anything if it didn't stop bleeding. But I haven't gotten a bloody nose in 20 years, maybe. It's crazy. I wonder what what's happened? going on there. I don't know, but it stopped. But it did. That is when I met the folks in the airport. And I still might have had some, like, might have been a little bit gross. Ooh. But anyway. Um, it's, all the, it's all the dang mold in the house. That's, <laughs> that's, the that mold, that's all that bad incense. Bad it's, all it's all that incense. <laughs> Number, and then the last mm. one is a more of like, I give in, I give those two talks at Harvard and the one in California. I don't, I don't feel great just like come in and giving a talk. I don't think it's like my, mm. my like number one thing. I don't think, I don't think any <laughs> of them were, were total home runs. What would be your preference? Or maybe it's like on a retreat or something like that. I don't know. Like I don't have like the, cause I need to, I think I, I can need to know the people, listen to them a little bit, hear them. But one was like an after dinner, eight o'clock talk. One was like an after brunch talk. I just don't really necessarily like have those in my back pocket. Hmm. So that's the, all. The post brunch talk. Yeah, it's like cause, uh, <laughs> I don't know how many people have that in their back pocket. I'm, some people do. I think you got to make it like. But do you like giving talks? I like giving good talks. <laughs> you know what I mean. I wow. like when it goes well. I don't like when it's. I don't really have a lot of direction. I don't think. I like giving talks. Yes, that's true. You like giving talks? Yeah, I think once again, it's it's one of those things where if you tell me to talk about something, I will. But like, if it's I don't like the yeah whatever you want to talk about, it's harder. Then it's like, ooh. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. What about you? I prefer not giving talk. Like, I don't like I don't get to do it a lot. And so, like, going on the parish mission, mm -hmm. like, I think I have a different experience preaching at Mass. Right. Like, I, I that's something just, like, it's prayer for me. Like, it, it's not. But we're giving a talk, and, like, it wouldn't be, like, my first kind of movement. I, I think the one-on-ones, I think, like, just kind of. Yeah, just kind of being with people one on one, or even just like a smaller group of people that you're walking with, like an over a period of time. But yeah, I don't giving big bigger talks just just very different, mm. or longer talks or whatever. I got invited back to seek, so I'm hoping to do better than I did last year. I'm I'm, I'm gonna go for it. No, that's did, great. Did you get invited to seek? I, I did get invited to seek also too. Are you gonna do it? I said yes. Nice one. Oh, I forgot to ask about it though. Maybe I didn't say yes. Sorry. <laughs> what what talk are you? Oh get? no, by then. Do you know what? Not yet. I'm a impact speaker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Breakout, Breakout session. Breakout, Breakout session. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That could mean 100 people. That could mean 3,000 people. For you, last time it meant 3,000 people. Yeah, I know. I don't think 3,000. Why not? Will come. I do know a couple of priest friends will come. I told them already. <laughs> like if Father, I was there, I'd come. <laughs> Father Jose, I just Father Sean that out there for Father, Father Mark Mary. <laughs> yeah. And so. Great. For, cool. Yeah. That's great. Do you want to practice like the talks? Yeah. Can we do that? Yeah. yeah. We'll script them out and then all on podcast. Yep. Hopefully. Don't we know a religious community that like scripts out everything? They get, they have them all written and then they like work with people and they Gosh. go through it. That's true. At least in, in some talks. Mm. Not the CFRs. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> You're giving a talk? Good for you. I'm not coming. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Good for you. Oh. You got a podcast? I'm going to try and listen for the first two minutes. Never again. <laughs> anyway, so... Thanks for letting me go through that. No worries. Sweet. Three, three two. The boxing, man. You guys want, you want to box it? Have we ever well, boxed? Uh, no, we never will. And I will gladly box you. <laughs> I will knock you out. <laughs> headshots included. Yeah, I've been doing no, push-ups. Headshots, bro. <laughs> Father P.T., why do you have a black car? I was fighting with Father Mark Mary. Oh, my gosh. 
Anyway, no comment. <laughs> All right. Um, here's what we're going to talk about. Me almost having to cough again. Give me a second. There's a button. <laughs> <laughs> There's a button. What? what? I was yep. just imagining Father Angel and I boxing. Mm. Who would win? <laughs> It would be the most Katie. boring <laughs> boxing match ever. <laughs> Katie. <laughs> Why would it be boring? Father Angel would be upset because he's like sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> Father Innocent would probably like hurt his knee. Excuse me. <laughs> he'd start getting allergic to something. <laughs> oh, man. I'm getting old, bro. I'm like I'm falling apart. Let's oh. talk about particular struggles. <laughs> <laughs> this is perfect. This is, perfect this segue. Is particular struggle. So here is the pastoral sort of the question, the situation, and I'm grateful to, I've been kind of thinking about it for a while and I'm grateful to have, <coughs> excuse me, to have you guys, y'all are, <coughs> get it together. Grateful to have you guys sort of uh, chime in on this is, is here's the situation, right? Is uh, here's going to the experience and just to, to wrestle with the different uh, values and factors, right? Is, um, some some listeners, some people, right? They're gonna have we'll call it like a particular struggle in their life. So there's there's a particular area in their life where um, they just they like they, they tend to fall and they tend to struggle. And so particularly, I'm thinking of a like sort of like a habitual sin. So someone might have a habitual sin with like chastity or with um, I don't know like anger or with um, it could be like a substance thing or they're, they're just they, there could be just a serious thing and um and so one of the temptations and this is what we wanted to like wrestle with is like how do you how do you uh, respond to and 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 really kind of like take serious um sort of the serious sort of uh, sin in your life without allowing it to totally take over like your spiritual life and define your spiritual life because i think for for an example we'll just use sort of the chastity question is um there's just people who like who again like that's kind of the primary thing that they're they're paying attention to and if it's a real struggle it could be like they're objectively you know they're struggling with um like grave matter so it's a serious sin <clears throat> but at the same time i do think that there's a way in which we can take that serious without having all of our time and intention and like our like having like our spiritual life really be reduced to like a purity project and um but at the same, so that's like, I think, I think, uh, if, if you guys can kind of speak into that, first of all, of just like, is that actual thing of, um, just of, of being able to have like a serious struggle, but without having that be the thing that totally like takes up all of your like exam and time and reflection time and prayer time. Um, does that kind of concept or that sort of uh, tension resonate with just some of your pastoral experience? Yeah. <clears throat> I think oftentimes what, what can happen is, uh, and once again, maybe speaking from from personal experience, like like we, we just know like what we we struggle with, and like there's an inability for myself to think that somebody could think differently of me, right? Because like I'm confronted with my own angerness, or like I know I'm short with people, or I know that like whatever it is, like once again that particular struggle that I struggle with, and when I'm left to my own thoughts and to my own, specifically like just in silence of prayer or whatever it is, like that's what comes up first, and so naturally I'm gonna like okay, Lord, like, how can you love me if these things are present, you know? Um, but I do think it's, a, it's it, we're able to to actually have attention, if you will, like to, to go after the specific sin while not making our prayer life and everything about our life, specifically like getting out that sin. I think uh, once again, this is gonna be no shock, but it's in relationship, right? Um, I'm thinking like in real relationships with people, not to say that there's a fake relationship with the Lord, but <laughs> but like in human relationships, right? Like the more you get to know somebody, the more there's like an understanding of like, oh, okay, like this is a part of the relationship. Um, and there's a patience over time that you you have with the person of like, let's say for example, Father Mark Mary, I know you're a certain way with about certain things. Um, like toilet seat covers, for instance, right? <laughs> and uh, Personal space, personal quiet sp in the mornings. Yeah, but there's like, like, as I get to know you more, like I just know, like I have more patience in my heart, if you will, like for you, right? Because there's there's a love, there's a fraternity, there's there's a brotherhood there where maybe I don't get to know you. I'm like, why is this guy always doing these things or whatever? But in the, yeah, in the relationship, there's just like a, a pocket, if you will, that's opened up for patience. And I think sometimes like in the particular struggle for sins, we don't understand that like as we commune with the Lord more, as we talk to him more, like he has patience and he's always, he's eternally patient with us specifically to our sins. 
and this is not to say to to <laughs> not go after it, um, but to understand first, like from the Lord where He's coming from. Like He He's patient with us, and secondly, like oftentimes with these sins, um, there's going to be something, some action needs to be done. But just to, I guess, and this is I think what we're trying to get at is to to avoid the over focusing in on that particular sin. Because once again, the Lord's vision of us is so much greater than that particular sin. Like as we see in the scripture passages and, and everything, like the Lord never identifies a person like by their sin, you know, like the hemorrhaging woman. He doesn't say, hey, bleeding lady. He says, daughter, <laughs> you know, uh, the case, all these different things. And, and, um, and so it is something where the Lord desires a relationship. But to say that you're so much more than that particular struggle. Um, and I want to, in patience and love, walk with you through these things because I know your heart, I know what you're created for, and a desire for you to have fullness. Um, and so, yeah. Yeah, I think I think it's a tactic of the enemy to disorient us. And so if he can get our focus off of the Lord and out of relationship and focus on our, ourselves or even our own woundedness, right? So this, I, th I feel the tension often in the spiritual life or in just in formation of, of any kind, for, like we're growing as disciples or being formed. Um, you do have to grow in self-knowledge and self-awareness, self-acceptance, right? We, like we, have to, we have to look at our hearts, but we have to do that in relationship, right? right? But the enemy wants us to get stuck in ourselves. And so we we actually turn our hearts or or kind of like put these 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 walls up, and so then we get focused on our sin or our struggle, and that's where the shame, the guilt, everything compounds. Then the lies, like Father Angels talks about, the infection that's around it, and so that the difficulty is that like we have to we have to like we we use the word like notice. Um, we have to we have to notice the the movements of of sin and darkness and brokenness, but also. We have to just, we have to make sure that's always in relationship, right? Mm -hmm. Because we can get overwhelmed pretty quick by our own weakness. But when Jesus comes and we allow ourselves to be with him, then the whole, I'm, I'm oriented on him actually, right? Mm -hmm. And so then, then I, I'm, I'm loved back to life. I, someone's looking at me and not judging me and not be, like not being harsh or critical, but he, he's loving me. And then I'm, then it like these, that's where, that's where the healing happens. But sometimes we think we have to fix ourselves or um, sister Miriam has a great line that sometimes we think we have to like go on a search and destroy mission in our hearts. And so we can just like go after this sin and the Lord's like, whoa, take it easy, right? Because oftentimes there, um, there's like this structure of sin in our lives and we see the fruit like chastity struggles, but there's a whole like root system there, right? So like if you go after the fruit, like, okay, like spend all this time, energy, spiritual, emotional energy on just making sure that bad fruit goes away. But it's oftentimes not a chastity problem. And so that's why you have to stay with the Lord and stay in, in relationship with other people because slowly over time, and usually with a lot of tenderness and a lot of patience, and, and it does take time, just time, that we begin to see what's feeding these things. Yeah, okay, stop lusting. Okay, great. That makes like, okay, thanks, Father. <laughs> right, that we, it's very clear and concrete. But but oftentimes the Lord wants, if we can get in a safe place and we can keep our eyes fixed on him, he's gonna start revealing the, the root system, the why, what's behind these sins, right? So we gotta just be very careful that we oversimplify and become, make our light, life and our hearts very narrow. Like I wanna get rid of this sin and I'm gonna do whatever it takes to get rid of that. We have to kind of keep open and remain in relationship and we start to notice what feeds things. And I think we that can only happen in relationship with the Lord and other people. And it takes time. Right. And just to say too, I think sometimes the tension or at least the the temptation maybe is better. Uh, it's just like, I just want the one off. Like I just want this, this thing to be done with. And so like if it's chastity or if it's anger, if it's something that once again, we struggle with habitually, like, oh, I just want to pray and it's done. <laughs> You know, it's not, or, like that, bro. Yeah. It's, not, it's not like you're click click of the button and it's mm -hmm. like away. Yeah. Like. But that's the way we've been formed in society. Like just the, the ease of things in a, in particular of just, yeah, coming to just the, an easy end, you know, and, and this is a battle. It's a struggle. But once again, in particular, as you mentioned, <laughs> you know, the basis is relationship. And so just identifying like, okay, like coming to prayer. And once again, if we're going to pray through a specific thing, a specific struggle, just asking the Lord first, like, how does he see us? And like, just sitting before him and just like, okay, Lord, like, how do you see me? And in particular with this specific struggle, Lord, like, come Holy Spirit, what do you want to reveal to my heart about this specific struggle? Once again, we're talking to somebody, we're not stuck in our heads and trying to think of the best game plan to defeat this thing, which once again, it's not like a pro, I mean, it's not 
a one-off thing, but it's in relationship through the Holy Spirit that we're going to actually be, oh, okay. As you're saying, like there's a whole root system underneath here. Like I never realized that when such and such happened or when these things were going on or in place in my life, I need to get rid of it. And in that moment of recognition, okay, Lord, like where were you in that moment? Or like, just once again, it's constantly speaking back to him and allowing him to basically cater and um, to minister to your heart in a real and beautiful way. And you could just forget about it in the sense of leave it in prayer. You know what I mean? And just continue your life. So that way, once again, it's not these over, like these thoughts aren't over and or, or aren't overarching your mind. And like, you just consume constantly about this, this thing. I gotta be better. I gotta be better. I gotta be better. Once again, at that point, who is talking to you? Like, is it the evil one? Meaning like, okay, you gotta be better about these things. You lose focus on the relationship or is that the voice of your father saying, I'm only going to love you if you're better about these things, you know, and holding intention once again, yes, there are steps that need to be taken to root out the sin. But once again, if it's constantly that, I guess, focus, it's probably not the voice of our father. Yeah. And so you gotta be, just be careful of like this criticalness of like, again, the en enemy wants to disorient us. And I think a lot of this has to do like discernment of spirits. That's why all these things are so important. Our hearts become sensitive to the movements of God and myself and sin and all these other things. But I think what's, what's, what's difficult is that we, we be, when we see the sin and the struggle, there's so much time and energy and criticalness and self-hatred and self-resentment. Mm -hmm. It all just kind of builds up. Right. And so I think a, a first stage is like, take a deep breath and you're, it's, it's a journey and, and you're loved here. And again, going to confession and the sacramental life is key, right? Our daily prayer is key. But again, instead of a critical kind of like it's not almost like above the line, below the line. Instead of a below the line sense of ourselves where we're critical and judgmental, it's like, okay, Lord. And this is this is big. I think this is big in this place, especially when you face our own weakness and sin. Holy Spirit, come. Like, what's happening here? Mm -hmm. Like, instead of being critical and, and, and hating yourself, like, just Jesus, come here and teach me. Like, why? Like, in my desire here for lust, like, what's happening? Or what do I believe about myself here? Like you're just you're just uh, you're just noticing and and observing and and like un not being afraid of your heart. Like Jesus, tell me what's happening, right? Instead of instead of again just like being so consumed by this once in and like just wanting to be better and like okay, I'm gonna do it by myself or like I got to do these things. Like I think it there is an invitation to to just be with the Lord and let Him teach you about your heart there. Mm -hmm. Like Jesus, the Holy Spirit, come teach me what like what what's happening in my heart now. What do I want? What do I believe about myself? Um, and then he'll show you, right? Uh, but it's gonna take time. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, it's just, it's not magic, right? right. I love saying that, like, it's not magic. It's mm -hmm. not like, okay, and there it is, right? Mm -hmm. Healing happened. Um, but there's real grace and real relationship. But um, it just, again, I just said it last time too, but be prepared for the good struggle because it takes time. Right, right. And like all good things that it's okay. <laughs> We're just going back to continue. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Sorry. No, he's just thinking, I know you're like very present, but I'm like, I'm sorry if I like keep just talking. <laughs> so I'd like to follow up, just staring straight. But um, like all good things take time, <clears throat> right? There's there's nothing, anyway, like a, a fruitful relationship in your life, once again, a human relationship in your life, like over time, it's going to mature and develop and just become this beautiful thing. You, people just hopefully don't just meet somebody and get married, right? I know there are instances of that, but but usually like, it is something where like just over time, like there's a maturation and a beauty of it. And so like also too, for struggles, like, yeah, over time, these things, maybe they've been a part of your life. And just to remember that the Lord is about healing that specific thing too, but it's going to take time. And over time, he will reveal to you just how faithful and present he desires to be. Once again, if we're in this place of allowing him to come there, but not once he, not focusing just on that specific thing because he has so much more to show you about your heart than that specific sin, right? It's the prodigal son where he was, yeah, he was in the mud, he was in this stuff, but it's as he came to himself and basically he remembered, oh yeah, like I could go to my father's house. And even if I'm a servant, at least I'm there. And so the movement is, is towards that <clears throat> as opposed to sitting in the mud and just recognizing like, ah, I'm just gonna be here forever and I'm just like a, a mess and I, I can never go back to that place. And so, it's just remembering who we are in the Father's eyes, that there's a sonship, there's a daughtership that that is huge. And this is this may be a part of a struggle, but it's precisely that. And the victory is so much greater because he has won it for us and he desires to speak into our hearts in a fuller sense. This is not an excuse. I want to be very clear about what I'm about to say. This is not an excuse for sin at all, mm -hmm. but I'm not afraid of humility. 
Like I'm not afraid of like, okay, I got my issues worked out. And now right. I like don't, I think there's something about St. Paul's like, like in my, in, it's in my weakness that I'm strong, right? Like the, right. the thorns in the flesh. It's not an excuse to be like, oh, I have a thorn. So, you know, that's not it. But I'm not, a, I'm not afraid of like, of just right. Like instead of being threatened or hating ourselves because of our sin, absolutely Jesus wants to bring healing. Like that's the whole con. Like Pope Benedict says, healing is the whole content of salvation history. <laughs> like right. Jesus wants to bring us healing. That's that's true, but in the journey, like where we don't have to be afraid of our weakness because again, it keeps us so humble <coughs> that like okay, if we like make ourselves perfect, like okay, I don't need God, but I'm not afraid of that. Like that that part of us that has to just face our brokenness and and just be humbled and little and poor to let God come take care of us. Right. So again, it's not just about like fixing ourselves right. and making all these things go away. We are absolutely freed and forgiven. And Jesus wants us to grow. Mm -hmm. Like the life of holiness and perfection is real. But St. Paul reminds us that even in our weakness, we're made strong. And so it's not a sign of like, I look how bad I am. Mm -hmm. But if, what if, what if our sin or our, our healing journey as it takes time, what it could, what if it could just remind us that, wow, like I'm so little. And I'm so poor and Jesus meets me here and I have so much hope that he wants to heal me, but I don't have to be afraid of this. Like Jesus <laughs> is here and he loves me. Um, I, I just think there's something to that. I'm not afraid of being little and poor in our, in our, in our weakness. So instead of like, again, zooming in on this particular struggle that like, man, I'm like so bad and I don't have my life together and I can't believe this shame actually like, no, Lord, this is where you meet me. And I'm just gonna let myself be loved and just be little and poor and let, let myself be take, taken care of. Cause we're, we're not projects, we're people. <laughs> like once again, and the Lord doesn't treat us like Home Depot. You know what I mean? Like, all right, I'm just gonna grab these tools and uh, just, you know, put a board over this thing. Like, but no, he's dealing with human hearts and, and he's sensitive and he's loving and he understands the human condition, <laughs> you know? And so just to know once again that, um, that desire just to fix myself or just to kind of, uh, you know, do these certain things to make myself better isn't sometimes the best way to look at things. Like, okay, I have a human heart and Lord knows my struggle and he desires for wholeness, but what does that process look like? You know, and asking him and wondering, okay, Lord, like it's in your hands. Like I'm a weak man and, and you know this. And so can you love me in these places? And it's once again, putting it on him like, okay, Jesus, can you show me, your, show me the way forward? Mm -hmm. Uh, but once again, this is the basis of it. It's relationship. And I'm not going to just focus on like, oh my gosh, Lord, I'm a horrible person. Uh, the end of the story. Like, no, like once again, he knows that we're not projects, but we have hearts and we're people. So to kind of, maybe we'll like, I'm going to propose like a particular situation just so we can kind of talk about how we would navigate <laughs> it is. Um, so pretend there's like a young, there's a person, so guy or girl, whatever with a, sort of the habitual sin with, with chastity, like just action, something they look at, whatever. And maybe, so maybe there's like a, a fall, like one to three times a week. So it's a pretty consistent thing dealing with objective matter, like ob objectively grave matter. Um, like, so what, like, what does that person's, cause I think like the temptation is going to be like, okay, like as long as I didn't fall, like I did good today, uh, there's going to be sort of a tendency to sort of like, uh, yeah, go to confession when there's a fall, and and if there's not a fall, then like not go to confession, and it, and so there's there's a there's a way in which it becomes something like they 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 know it's serious, they know it's 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 a uh, it's grave matter, um, it's a continual thing, right, and and it affects them in a lot of ways. So how does how does somebody like what are they what does their prayer look like? What does their approach to things look like when um, they have this yeah a, a regular fall with a serious sin? And so taking that serious, but also not allowing it to <laughs> define their relationship. How, like how, what do they do with that? Yeah. Um, I think a part of it too, right. Is, uh, it's like, once again, if you want to overcome sin or there's a desire to be better about things, you have to pray. Um, and this isn't like, just like the, the magic cure all like, oh yeah, just pray and it'll be better. Cause that's never like, especially like in confession, <laughs> I wouldn't say, yeah, Father, I, I habitually struggle with these things. Oh, yeah, just pray. It'll be better. But um, I do think there is there is truth to like having a relationship. And, and so I guess super practically, right? Like, so somebody's falling consistently every week. And uh, if it's in a conversation, um, just ask them like, okay, like, what is your, what is a prayer like? You know, like, how are you? Well, I'm not praying. Okay. Like, maybe we could start there. And um, 
And in particular, right, once again, just basically trying to lead the person to the place where they know that they're not just this one particular thing, right? And so, because oftentimes with a specific sin, there's shame, there's like just the lies that flood in because we've opened ourselves to things that we just shouldn't. Um, and, it's just, and that could kind of go with any sin. And the prayer, what it does is it's just, once again, it reinforces the truth of who we are. Um, and once we kind of move away from the shame, in particular with this sin, we can start to, oh, okay, like I just need to be better. And it helps us make better choices and it reinforces the way in which we're able to choose things for, for the Lord as opposed to like in isolation. And maybe that's a more important thing. It brings us into communion. It brings us into a place of, <laughs> Of realizing that I'm not just by myself, because oftentimes what the evil one wants to do is to, to separate us, to make us isolated, to to operate from this place mm -hmm. of loneliness. And so, if I'm able to say this in prayer, like Lord, I fell again. Like once again, He knows these things, um, and we brought it to confession over and over again. Uh, I said, can, can you speak to me about this? Like like where's your heart at me or for me? How does your heart feel when I do these things? You know, like so like once again talking with Him and listening, and just seeing how your heart's moved. I think is is a real practical step towards this. So uh, this is kind of different for me, but I'm actually going to start from the outside and then move in. Mm -hmm. um, because I, obviously I think the interior life and your exper our experience of, of Jesus is actually the most primary thing, which we Father PT talked about and we always talk about here. Um, but just for the sake of practicality and maybe just, maybe, I hope it kind of comes across as like some sort of like stirring of something rather than there's like no perfect answer. But, but I think if this is helpful, I do think one of the discussions we have to have, or, or like if I was walking with someone over a period of time who wanted to go on this journey of healing, I actually do think the ascetical life is important. And what I mean by that is like, like we have to make decisions for the Lord. We have to make decisions that, okay, like there's, there's a, there's a world the, the, the worldly way of going about things is it's like not disciplined. And it like moves towards, I want to feel good. And, and so, and it, it, we can't pretend that the world doesn't have an effect on us, right? Because we're, we are, we are deformed. Let me say we are deformed by the world. And so our hearts are pulled to like what is easy and what is comfortable. And, and I just want, like, I want to cope. I want to make this feeling or, or yeah, I want to make this experience in my heart go away. And so we can numb, we easily numb and we, and kind of, again, we build up walls to make, to, to protect ourselves from these things. So like, I do think the ascetical life, it's, it's a part of the, our Christian tradition that we have to kind of like reclaim our hearts and reclaim our humanity that like what I actually think is going to give me pleasure and a way out here, or like we're talking about chastity, right? That actually doesn't do that. And so actually when my, my heart and my body craves for, for this sort of expression, I need to like tell it the truth. Right, I, I need to reclaim that. So the ascetical life is like is discipline. It's virtue. It's fasting. It's it's like slowing down to be like, hey, like I actually probably need to like every day practice. Like, okay, I'm gonna fast a little. I really want to eat, but I but I'm like using food to remind me that like I my body is not in control. You know, like I, I like my body doesn't get to tell me what to do. No, I'm gonna fast a little, and I'm just gonna remind my body, no, like you want this, and I'm gonna say no. The, I mean, there's very like fasting 101, <laughs> but, um, I think the ascetical life is important. You, it's a whole life. So discipline when you, like when you go to bed and when you get up, making time for prayer, like doing healthy things, taking care of yourself. It's all the ascetical life of, of letting, helping our, 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 um, my life just live in the truth about it, kind of my humanity and my spiritual life. So does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I think, I think the ascetical life, it, it doesn't just have like, oh, just be chaste. Like I think it's all like this full expression of, of my 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 spiritual my human. So when when we can have that discussion and not like again, it, I'm going to be very careful. I won't quote it, but there's there's programs that kind of like ha have the ascetical part pretty heavy, and we just got to be careful because it's not like we're just going to earn our chastity or earn our healing or just do these things. And I'm going to like white knuckle my way to chat like to purity. It just doesn't work. So ascetical part is important. But then we, we, when we move into our interior life, I think again, it just the, uh, like a little bit more, like kind of similar to Father PT, like, like we have to just be really honest with the Lord. Like, like what do we want, right? Like we have to have, start having honest, like conversation and not just the monologue, not just thinking about it, but like actually bring ourselves into relationship. Like Jesus, like revealed to me, like what I want. 
Like, what am I looking for? Right. Asking those questions and, and just like, again, it, just, we have, we have to have just honest prayer and not being afraid and not dressing it up. And, and again, it's just like, sometimes we sit in a holy hour, we have to like figure it out all out in a holy hour, but like we have to just having be, be have, having an honest conversation with the Lord. Like, and, and I, I can just experience the Lord, just like his compassion and tenderness. Like, Hey, like what, just like share it. Like Jesus, just like share your heart with me. Like, what are you desiring there? Like, and, and just opening our hearts up like, Lord, I could, again, like I, there's just pain. There's sorrow. Like, I don't like feeling like this. Like I feel alone. Like again, an uncensored heart towards the Lord is it, and it's going to be painful and it's, it's hard. But I think the freedom and the uncensored heart to just be with him and and then these things start to come up. And 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 here's the, again the, I, you can tell I just got back from a JP2 healing, you know, retreat, but I, I love their definition of healing. Like everything is just kind of brought back into communion with the Lord. And so, like, okay, let this memory come up. Like, man, like, why do I turn unchastity? Like, Lord, I'm just like I'm stressed and I'm anxious and I feel alone. Like, okay, Lord, I just give that to you. Right, it's all brought back into communion, and if we do that and we commit to doing the work of the of our interior life, I know it's slow, but like, I so I would just encourage, like, again, so it's whether it's journaling or whether it's like walking through different like your history and thinking about the healing of memories. Like, a lot of these things can be packed and potent in our hearts, and they just got to be opened up. So it's it's real work. Um, so I would invite someone on the ascetical journey. Like we gotta, we gotta like be like be disciplined in, in a really healthy, holy way. And then also we gotta go on a journey to like let your heart just be open and raw with the Lord and and walk people through kind of more of an uh, like a, an an openness like with the pain. Mm-hmm. And even to just like in particular with chastity, but this could be translated for other like just habitual struggles. Um, like it never just pops out of nowhere. There's sometimes a thought pattern that leads us to this place. Uh, it's the breadcrumb trail, right? That leads us to, to sin out of the the place of communion. Um, and so you could notice or begin to try to, I guess, become more aware or notice like, oh, when I'm feeling lonely, like I'm going to go to this place. Or like when I'm replaying my day and like whatever it is, like or, or when I saw that specific image, like that kind of sparked something in my heart. And so you can, if you start to, to become more attuned and aware to specific like ways in which you're pushed or pulled towards that sin, just to, at that moment, like, once again, this is going towards the honesty is like, Hey Jesus, like, I want to do this thing again. Like I'm, I'm tempted to go look at pornography. I'm tempted to masturbate. I'm tempted to be angry. I'm tempted to whatever it is like, so just help me. So like, but literally in that moment to articulate that thought, because once again, um, and this is, I think a little bit of what brother Lawrence way back in the day was talking about, like if you have the idea that I'm going to go to prayer and everything's going to be calm and still, and I'm able to communicate, communicate perfectly to the Lord. If I haven't practiced it throughout the day, (laughs) like you're kind of fooling yourself. Right. And so that's why I think like in particular with this, with sins, um, you can specifically say at that moment, like, Oh man, she, you know, like whatever it is, like my heart's being moved to this place, Lord, can you see me or just come Holy spirit, but just having some sort of prayer just to kind of call and bring yourself into relationship because you no longer face it by yourself. You're with the Lord. And then, forget about it or just like leave it like okay lord i place this in your hand and then just see how things change just see how things move and okay or you know what i do need to get out of this place or like i'm i'm on this website whatever it is like once again like you know the trail specific to the patterns of sin that you struggle with if this case is chastity um like the specific ways in which i don't place my heart in the right place lord can you see me or help me in this place um and then actually make the the practical steps of taking yourself out of that place but and forgetting about it. But once again, I think that helps us focus on the relationship as opposed to on the specific sin. <clears throat> I don't know if you guys can, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I don't, I don't know if you know. I think, I feel like there's a saying in AA, something along the lines of like, the only thing that needs to change is everything. Does that resonate? Is that true? Right. <clears throat> and so AA would be the situation where it's like, okay, you know, okay, somebody's struggling with alcohol. But there's this this wisdom of, of understanding, okay, like, but actually, uh to like, the, like you kind of talked about, like there's this whole other like root system. There's there, there's this whole other integrated sort of worldview behaviors, things like that, which are are actually like causing this to happen. So to get this thing to stop, there's like we have to do like a full sort of like you just have to it, you have to do a whole like deep sort of 
cleaning out of things and resentments and all that sort of stuff, right? <clears throat> and so one of the the, the immediate sort of um, implications of that, it's like, it took some time to get here. It's going to take some time to get out of here, right? And so it's not like there's not this um, this like kind of intense like fear driven urgency <laughs> because they understand. It's just this real experience understanding of like, okay, this is a this is going to be a big overhaul that we're going to need to do, and we're going to get there, but we're going to go on this journey, right? And so and so it might take some time, and and so but there is like a little bit of a I think a, a, like a sobriety and even sort of like a a patience in in, in the approach. <clears throat> and so I think that's true with with so many things. And and I do like we've talked about like the chastity thing, but I think this has like with some mental health stuff or some like image stuff. I just think there's a lot of other kind of areas of this where there is a particular like behavior which which hurts us or hurts other people, but it's connected to this whole other system of experiences and 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 uh like uh perspective on the world, perspective on ourselves, things like that. And so, so it's a, it's a big undertaking. It's going to take some time. And so one of the responses of that, I think from pastors, from, from us, from the Lord is like, he just understands like, okay, we're going to go on a journey. Right. And certainly with something like this, like the Lord could give the grace for it to go away. But I think, um, and it's just this mystery of, of sometimes the, like, because the Lord wants to bring the healing to the whole person, like he's going to allow us to struggle with this thing because that's what makes us kind of do the work of, of growing in the healing and the holiness that that he, he desires for us. And so that's just <clears throat> a thought. And I guess the, um, like, why does this matter? Why do I care about this? Because I just do think that it can be a tactic of the enemy to have us hyper fixate on one action of our lives. And that is, again, that's, it just, it, it ultimately takes our eyes off of the Lord, puts our eyes on us. And, um, and, and then because we're, our eyes are off the Lord, we're, we're uh, defining ourselves essentially by this struggle we have. Now this is actually going to feed the problem because we're going to, we're going to leave the relationship. We're going to feed some of these lies. And instead of like, we feel like we're putting in a lot of effort and taking it really serious. But in fact, by doing it outside of this relationship with the Lord, we're, things can actually get, uh, grow worse. Right. Cause I think self-hatred and things like that, um, are one of the, the ingredients, which really get us in a lot of trouble. Go ahead. I'll go first, and then you go. Yeah, um, go for, yeah, go for it. But just like outside the relationship, right? Because I could, I could be experiencing a particular struggle, and I'm praying through it, or at least I think I am, and the Lord's not changing it, and that leads me to this place of God doesn't care, you know, like God's not a part of this or whatever it is, which is not the truth. Like God actually very, His heart is is literally breaking for communion with you. You know, um, and so that's why it's good to be honest about these things, and in particular, be in relationship because there there can be the um, the hiding sometimes behind like I'm just gonna go to confession, yeah, you know, and and it's just once again uh, the way in which maybe that that's a part in time where yes, you go to confession, but like if you desire to have this out of your life, just know that the desire is not born out of anywhere. Like the Lord actually desires it more than you do, <laughs> you know, and you can trust that He's good. Uh, but if you find yourself like outside the loop of communion, outside the loop of uh, just like bringing it to the Lord. And if you ever find yourself like, if God really loved me, he would have taken it away. Just recognize once again, that's probably not the voice of the father speaking to you at that moment um, and asking, okay, like, Lord, what's your heart for me in this situation? Um, and our father doesn't speak in condemnation or like in a, in a critical way, but he speaks in love in a tender way. And so. Yeah, like I, I think we just have to remind ourselves that the Lord's not like interested in like managing our sin. It's just like, okay, well, like stop doing that. Or like, at least like, you know, don't do it as much. <laughs> like, you know, like that's not the Lord's voice. And sometimes I think in this healing journey, I'm like, I want that to go away. Or I don't want to feel like that. I don't want to be attracted to that. I just want to stop. Right. And, and what just, again, we've said it on here before, but that's not healing. Man, like behavior management is not healing. Like do this and don't do this. And that's not being, that's like the, not the gift of Christianity. It's again, it's the gift of intimacy and relationship. And so it actually heals us. And, and this is a, again, the, the, the proposal is that we're not going to become so narrow and small hearted where I'm like, okay, I got to look at this one thing and want like, got to fix it myself. What we, what we want to do is, is if we stay in relationship, it's the love that heals, like letting Jesus love me with all of my weakness and all of my stuff. And yeah. I see that. Like I see that struggle and it's consistent. Yeah, but but you 
like trying to to focus and spend all your time and energy on trying to manage that is not it doesn't actually heal you it actually like it, it just totally drains you mm. you know but what but heals if we can stay in a relationship and let ourselves be loved in our weakness and this is this like not performing and being chosen like can we allow ourselves to be chosen in our weakness like still like the lord is not going to to condemn or judge or like push us away but if we let ourselves be chosen in our weakness and loved in our weakness, little by little, that's what that's that's where the healing comes. It's love that heals, not like managing behavior. And I think that's like the the beautiful thing again. And like their struggles are real, and conversion is real, and and growing in discipline and doing all that is real. But it's love that 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 like is the driving force behind it all. Mm-hmm. And I think right from we're I, we're hopefully coming at this place just from kind of rooted in reality, right? Like if if doing six hard things or throwing you know like six novenas at whatever your struggle was, like healed it, we'd be like, yeah, okay, here do these do these things for a month and we'll be we'll be fine, like right. even whatever you know. But that's just not how it works, right? Uh, again, totally. like there is this there's this the the healing is actually going to be it's part of it, but also we have to get to the roots of it, and I think that's just part of. And I think that's, like, to be honest, I think that's one of the reasons that I personally uh, appreciate the wisdom of AA so much is like there is this, there's a certain like humility and um, like sobriety towards human weakness, but also there's like a great seriousness towards certain things like, like rooting out resentments and things like that and making sort of amendments and, or making amends, things like that. There's certain things that like, no, we're going to take these things really serious because if you don't do these things, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. But at the same time, if there's a struggle or the fall, there's like a lot of compassion and stuff. And I think that's, that's kind of the, a pretty, a pretty accurate, you know, uh, approach to it. Um, but, but I do like, I think we, and so I think we want that. There's a certain sort of like humility. Okay, Lord, I need your help. And I'm on, I'm like on the journey and it's going to take some time. There's, there's something of that, but also there is a, like a, a seriousness towards setting ourselves up for success. So, you know, if there is, um, repeated struggles with like chastity, we have to be serious about what we're looking at and what we're watching and, and like not putting ourselves in a cage in a sin. And I think actually a lot of times we try and throw, well, like throw a novena at a, a chastity struggle when really what we need to do is just like, we need to not bring our phones into our rooms or whatever it is, things like that. You know what I mean? It's like, no, like that's, that's, that's actually the like to be humble enough to say like, I can't use this thing in this place or I'll struggle. Like that's actually like the place of humility, which is going to bring some of the grace and healing. And so we do take that stuff serious, but at the same time, <coughs> um, you know, I think um, this is, I, I really do. I think this is like, it's like a jujitsu thing. It's like where you mm-hmm. use the other person's force against them. Right. Mm-hmm. That's a thing. Yeah. It's a, it's a little bit like trendy right now. So I don't want to, you know, <laughs> feel uh, whatever. But um, I think that's a thing of like, okay, while we're struggling, like if the Lord can use this in a profound way. And, and I think, you know, if we have a fall to like prayerfully kind of putting ourselves in the place of the prodigal son who the father runs, like and embraces while he's still fallen and kind of covered in muck or whatever, like to just, okay, Lord, I fell, like come and embrace me and love me like that, you know, and to really experience the, the Lord's love for us and his choice for us and his pursuit of us in our imperfection even, in the long run is going to be a huge source of healing and a huge source of strength and part of actually like the ultimate remedy from some, so many of these things, which, which lead us to, to sin. So we do like, we are taking it serious. We're understanding how the, like how the human person tends to work, how like how the Lord tends to work in these journeys. Like we take time. We, we really like are aggressive towards, you know, protecting ourselves and setting ourselves up for success and avoiding the occasion of sin. We're like strong about prayer, about ascetical practices, things like that. But at the same time, we're, we we really need to open ourselves up and to allow the Lord to love us while we're still fallen and on the journey. Um, so I think that's, is that an okay summary? Yes. Yeah, for sure. Great summary. Did you have something else here? Nope. Nothing else. Nothing else. Did it make sense why I just, yeah, why we talked about it? I mean, I, I really, I, I really understand it just because I think people struggle with this. Like yeah. they, they, you can get in a tough place and again, just the hypersensitivity and hyper focus and kind of a self, uh, self fix culture. And it just doesn't work in the spiritual life. And it actually, we spend a lot of time and energy on this and it, so I, I appreciate it a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's a thing. 
like uh, self-help or self-care and ah, I'm just going to do this on my own, grab a book and figure this out. But it has to be in relationship with the Lord who loves you, you know, so. Great. Cool. Who Who's turn is in it? In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you and adore you. We just thank you for choosing us even in our sinfulness and and just pursuing us and loving us um, just with all of our stuff. Father, we just ask you to come and keep coming. And again, in this place, just love us back to life and and, and captivate our hearts to, to look away from our sin and our struggle and our pain and to look to you. We just ask for this 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 prayer, this, this grace of dialogue with you that would uh, be the source of our healing. We just ask this through the intercession of Our Lady and St. Joseph and all of our patron saints. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Um, thank you to Janelle Bolheimer from Midwestern Ohio, Archdiocese of Cincinnati. Got that Quo Vadis mug, part of the group out there. Sweet. I think I showed my Harvard mug last time. I don't know if I showed it. I like this mug. Classy. Good. Great choice. I think it was Grace who chose you wanna, it. Do you make any comments about my mug? Father, I got Father PT some coffee between episodes. I got myself some coffee too. And I chose to bring him that mug because it's the worst. I don't understand why we had that mug. <laughs> wow. It's the, it's the worst mug. It's I don't not know. the worst mug, oh, but you it's top the, five. You were the mug guy. <laughs> well, no, it was, we, we were all mug people. But it, what if someone got that for us? Oh, sorry. But if you got that's this okay. for us, we, we're sorry. I apologize. I didn't the coffee still that. tastes great out of it. I mean, somebody obviously got it for us. Nobody bought it. But yeah, it's we just, wouldn't buy mug. But that's the thing, though, is this is what I learned about the, mm. the mug thing. Is some of our guys love that mug. It's like their go-to number one mug. Yeah. Me? No, thank you. Anyway. I'd like to, uh, okay, so I'd like to shout out Sean, who recently stayed with us from Australia. So Sean from Australia. Uh, his wife listens to the podcast, although I don't remember your name. <laughs> but uh, just shout you out. Just thank you for listening and uh, the kind words. I want to shout out, I'm going to kind of try to keep this random. I'm just going to say Joey's mom. Okay. She loved the stories episode and she was moved by that. So Joey's mom. Mother's like, uh, yeah. As expected, like family members, mothers, and stuff like that, mm -hmm. liked the stories episode. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Okay. See, uh, oh, don't forget. Fire within. Born on fire. Debate. Not no, man, man, man on fire. Man, <laughs> man on fire. <laughs> liar, liar, <laughs> pants no. on fire. Fire within. <laughs> the fire within by Father Dubé. See you. Um, Poco a poco vamos a llegar. Somos peregrinos, and you know that's who we are. We make our way. Hey, hey, little by little we learn a little more each day that God is love, that life is short, that all will be well.